this is this is the biggest campus party, right? By far, Mexico number one. Viva Mexico! This this is really great. I mean, I'm just seeing all the people here, and I was just talking to everybody else, and this is very poca madre, right? <laughs> so I want to talk about a little bit about Wikipedia and the movement, and it's really about the people, and I really want you guys to understand that. Now, what I did actually yesterday, um, my Spanish isn't great. Um, I had a little help. My wife's Brazilian, and I had some uh, um, Wikipedians in Mexico help me with this, so I translated all my slides to Spanish. So I may need some help, because if I don't understand what I wrote, you might want to help me through it. But I wanted to make sure that at least when you see it, you have a good idea what I'm talking about because I'm trying to make my best effort to make sure that you know you guys understand and really know that you know Wikipedia and everything we do is local. So what happens in Spanish is just as important as it happens in English or German or Japanese or Quechua or anything because it's all about the local communities. So when I talk about this, what I really want to really focus on is that you guys have the power. I mean, this is your world. And the biggest example of how this happens is showing the success of Wikipedia. Perdón. Los que requieren de traducción simultánea pueden ir a recoger casquillos a mano derecha del escenario, a donde está mi mano derecha. ¿Quién, ¿Quién quiere casquilla? Levanta la mano. Ok, están ahí a mano derecha y los demás, está bien. So, there tienes un problema. So, since we're trying to get things, you know, organized and everything, this is the first, I guess I'm the first talk, so... Um, I know it's pretty early, it's one o'clock, and some of you have just woken up, so let's try to stretch, let's do some exercises. Muy bien. But I just want to say, I haven't been to Mexico City since I was a kid, I think I was about 16 years old, and I can tell you that everything here is just amazing, like all the growth that I've seen, how Mexico has developed so well. I mean, I'm really excited to be here. I mean, it's really fantastic, all the things that are going on. And with what you guys are doing here with Campus Party and the one that's going to have after that and after that, I really feel that Mexico and Mexico City and all the areas in Mexico can really be like a fundamental part of the change that goes on in technology, the internet, and everything that allows communities to develop. So you guys should give yourself a hand. I mean, this is just Fantastic, everything that's going on here. So are we ready? Okay, we're good to go. So like I said, what I really want to talk about is less about us and more about you. Because really the power of the movement in Wikipedia, and I think anything else in the technology space now, is about the user, it's about you guys. And Wikipedia shows that success. So what I'm gonna do is show you an example of Wikipedia, what has made us what we are, all of it is really about you, and how this applies to other things that empower you as individuals to be able to go out there and do great things in this new world order. So this is a very important quote. Really, what you need to do is think outside of the box. Be radical. I mean, when Jimmy Wales first started doing this idea about an encyclopedia, he started Newpedia, and the thinking behind it was still traditional. He thought he would get some experts. They would put, like, you know, validated content. They would have people with PhDs make sure that it was the right content, and then it would be used for the masses. However, that was a very slow, cumbersome process. It didn't really work. Spanish, so you can, if you want to see what the quote means in your language. And the thing is, when they put up a wiki and we allowed the general public to actually contribute, 
I mean, it was phenomenal. The growth was phenomenal. And actually, even the quality of the content was amazing. And then there was kind of a fundamental shift in the thinking about what an encyclopedia should be. It really, this knowledge isn't just for the people to use, but also for people, all of you, to contribute to. So, I mean, that's a fundamental shift. I mean, really thinking radically about this, that it's not top down anymore. It's about everybody that uses it. And I'm going to talk about later, it doesn't just apply to the encyclopedia, it'll apply to anything that you do. I mean, when you guys take advantage of Twitter and how the community that uses Twitter creates hashtags, they create retweets, whether it's social gaming, and it's going to happen in mobile money, e other types of e-government, um, e-health, this is really going to be driven by you. So you have to understand that you guys have all the power. So when people say you can't do things, you need to think differently. You need to be radical about this. And I'm glad you guys are here thinking about these things because this is your time. Now, if we look at Wikipedia right now, the penetration, we still have a lot of work to do. But you can see, you know, in some of the developed, uh, more developed areas like, you know, Canada and Western Europe, you have a lot of penetration. You know, over 30% of the people, you know, are using Wikipedia. But you know, you see, you know, Mexico, U.S., there's still a lot more work to do. And then some of the other countries that are developing, Brazil, Africa, parts of Asia, there's a lot more things that can be done there. And the thing is, a lot of the people that use this information, um, they rely even from people from Mexico. When you put up content in Spanish, it gets translated, and other people try to use that as different references and use it throughout the world. So the effect that you have in this country affects everybody worldwide. And because all of you are involved with this, this makes Wikipedia the number five website in the world. Now to think about that, the top four websites above us, they're Google, Microsoft, Yahoo, and Facebook. I mean, those are massive, massive, kind of, um, in a lot of ways, top-down run organizations. Although they do allow, allow for a lot of community involvement, I mean, you know, Facebook is one of them, we are at the extreme level. We actually empower the community to have all the power to do what they think is right in terms of developing content, actually creating technology and scripts to add to the platform, and, you know, even making, helping us make strategic decisions about what's best for the projects. So that translates into 371 million unique view users, according to Comscore. And if you look at Comscore's methodology, um, they don't count traffic that comes from schools or people under the age of 15. So you know that number is probably double or if not more. And we see that growth extremely increasing in, in certain languages in particular, um, Portuguese, Spanish, and Russian. And we see more and more growth there. But you think about it, like when we look at these 371 million unique users, we want them also to be contributors. Because like I said, this is your encyclopedia. These are your projects. And you guys own this. And how unique these projects are, now they're in 256 languages. So like I said, you know, they do degree, they do differ in degrees in terms of how much content is in each language. But for example, like Catalan, I mean, that's already coming up around 200,000 articles. I mean, that's huge because a lot of the studies back, I would say a few years ago, when they would judge the value of encyclopedia, if you had 200,000 articles, you would be a full-fledged encyclopedia. Well, um, English right now is at 3 million. German is about 1 million right now, and Spanish is over 600,000 articles. I mean, Spanish alone is a massive database of knowledge. And you guys can do a lot more to help contribute to that whenever you like. So just to give you some perspective on the numbers here um, and how it's important that community drives this, these are all the other, I would say, classical uh, information sites that we kind of define. So a lot of the big names are here. You have New York Times, CNN, BBC, um, Merriam-Webster Dictionary. I don't know why Encarta's there, because I think that's gone now. <laughs> Wall Street Journal, you know, what we consider information sites. Now, this is a mind-blowing fact for you. 
These are all driven by institutions, right? All very well known. So if you look at the traffic on Wikipedia, the traffic there is greater than all of these other ones combined. That's how big it is now. And all of this is driven by community. So when people say, well, you know, is this kind of a fad? Is it kind of a, you know, having some kind of small impact? It's not at all. I mean, this clearly shows you that community is driving everything in the knowledge space. And I think it's going to happen, and it already isn't happening in multiple areas. But this should be proof enough. When somebody says, well, you know, I'm going to go to the, you know, I'm going to go to Wikipedia and look something up, pretty much most of the people in the world are looking it up there as well. They're not going as much to these sites as compared to this. And remember, like I said, this is stuff that you put up there. So they're looking at what you're doing, not what professionals or institutions are doing. So that's how important this is. Now, that all sounds really interesting. And the big question is, how do you get there? I mean, how does community get involved with this? How do they empower themselves? And how do they make these things happen? I mean, that's the big question. So what I'd like to talk about historically there are a lot of factors that come into play. A lot of you are pretty aware of this because you're very smart, and I know you're up on all the different technology changes that have happened. Some of this I actually have to update because you have different things that have evolved, especially with like, you know, geolocation and social gaming that have allowed different platforms for people to collaborate and contribute. But if you look at this, you know, it goes back in time where just having a personal computer had allowed people to kind of develop software on their own. They didn't have to go to a mainframe and check in with IBM or do anything of that sort. And platforms started to evolve. And even when you get to what we have now, like even with the App Store from Apple and what you can do on Foursquare and everyone that can contribute to that, you see a fundamental shift where more and more ability is going to the user, where these platforms are more open, information can be more shared, and everyone can get involved with it. So you look at this, these are all things that you're familiar with. When you had the, the, the advent of blogs coming out, I mean, that changed actually the journalistic platform. Individuals didn't have to just submit things to newspapers and allowed and waited for them to get, be allowed to get their approvals so something could be up in an editorial. Now you can just go up and say anything you want and you have a platform to do that. So what this really shows is that users really can kind of take over and do what they feel is in their best interest, and then what they want to say and express themselves. And I actually can kind of give an example. When I was back in school, I was in college, and um, I remember that I wanted to broadcast a TV show. This is back in 1991, so I think some of you weren't even probably born then, <laughs> which is a little embarrassing for me. But um, I remember I was at school, and you're thinking when you're at school, you know, you're working with a bunch of other students, right? And it's not going to be that bureaucratic. So I wanted to do a talk show on, like, the local cable television that the school controlled. And I had paperwork I had to fill out, and it was like 100 pages. I had to put, like, a proposal together, get all these people to sign off on it. So what I actually ended up doing was breaking into the TV station and just showing stuff. Well, can't really do that because that's usually a problem. But my friend at the time was saying, you know, why don't we broadcast stuff on the Internet? At the time, you know, bandwidth didn't really support that. But the thought process was already there, where we decided we wanted to kind of bypass all these institutional structures and be able to do things ourselves. And that's why you guys should really kind of embrace this opportunity, because, you know, if you were around 20 years ago and even 40 years ago, these opportunities never existed. I mean, you guys really have the ability to do a lot of different things. Like, if you don't even like, let's say, no offense to the Facebook, I have a lot of friends there, but let's just say you don't like Facebook anymore. You know, you have the power to go out and create something totally different if you want to. That's what's happened in this age. And so I want you guys to understand that this is the power shift. Everything that has started out in this level from the high level institutions is pretty much gone in a lot of ways. And you have the ability to do these things on your own. So in terms of us, like, in particular, how we, we look at this stuff so we allow communities to do these things. How do we develop them? You know, and allow them to develop themselves. 
This is really important because you have to accept that this power shift has happened. And the interesting thing is when I talk to a lot of people at a lot of companies, they say that they understand the power shift, but they really don't. And the way we look at it is, you know, we want to create a model that allows this to happen and allow other people to create off of it. And in some ways, I mean, it's a little more complicated, but just to simplify it, I mean, really what we're looking at is you provide the infrastructure. So we set up the servers. You set some basic rules. So you, you define what you kind of want to accomplish, and you even let the community flesh those out. I mean, for us, you know, we wanted to develop an encyclopedia that had a neutral point of view. Neutral was really important for us because we didn't want to have a lot of people saying different things like having a political slant or trying to put too much marketing material because then it's not seen as a knowledge database that anyone can use. So you set up some basic rules for that. And then the most important thing is get out of the way. I mean, this is really difficult to understand for a lot of people because sometimes when you have institutions and they try to control too many things, you actually kill them. And I think a lot of you probably understand that. I mean, if you worked at different companies, there's a lot of bureaucracy. And I'm not saying that you don't need that in some circumstances. But sometimes the hard thing is to just say, well, let's see how these communities, let's how people do these things. Let's see how they develop. I mean, when sometimes when we have problems, like we're thinking about, okay, you know, we're thinking about authentication. You know, should we be using OAuth? Should we um, use OpenID? There's also Facebook Connect. We ask community members, what are they using? What's the best things? And sometimes they even develop the script. They do a better job than us. And that is what's really important about getting out of the way. So out of any of these things, what I want you to remember is that from an institutional level, you got to figure out where you should be involved and where you should not be involved directly. And the hardest thing is knowing when to step out and let other people take control. So when we look at this model, I like to call it, and I think a lot of other people have defined this phrase previously, is servant leadership. So even though we're leaders, we're also servants. So we look at serving you. I mean, in a lot of ways, you guys have the power and you guys make the decisions and you kind of help lead us in the right direction. And you have to have the right skill sets to do that. And you really have to have a lot of, you know, list, you have to be able to listen. You have to really allow communities to grow and develop. You don't want to stop them in any possible way and allow those things to, to construct themselves in a profitable, in a, not in a profitable way, but in a value developing way. And have foresight for that. I mean, you gotta be able to see and picture what the possibilities are. The thing is, when you get to sometimes at an institutional level, you always think about risk, right? Like when you deal with other people, they're like, what is the downside? How can we, you know, will we be sued? What are the problems going to happen? You really need to think about what are the possibilities. And the thing is, you know, you guys are young and you're intelligent, creative, ambitious. you got to think about the possibilities. And if other people aren't allowing you to explore those possibilities, then you've got to go out and do it on your own. And the thing is, you have the ability to do that now. So let me tell you how we deal with the communities and kind of we look at it as a, you know, multiple stakeholder strategy. And the reality is, is we can't do everything ourselves from the foundation level that basically manages the infrastructure for Wikipedia and makes, you know, some of the, works on making some of the strategic decisions with the community. So, for example, mobile is really developing rapidly right now. And I have to admit, we're pretty much behind the curve. It's something that I'm going to have to focus on a lot more. So at this point, we have one part-time mobile developer. So as I mentioned before, fifth largest website in the world, one part-time mobile developer. That's pretty much insane, right? The thing is, though, the way we're able to survive for right now, and we do still need to kind of think about how we're going to scale out, but we allow a lot of that control to happen on the community level. And we actually try to open up our APIs. We need to have more robust infrastructure, but we allow other people to develop really cool applications off of Wikipedia. And some of them sell it. I mean, we try to make sure that there are a lot of opportunities for people to evolve and create on, the, on our platform and do amazing things, whether it's in the platform itself or pulling content off and making it available. So I've seen like all of Wiki, which is um, an offline version of Wikipedia that you could download for your iPhone 
Um, they were able to go out and do it before us, and we encourage that. I think that's great. So what happens is a lot of that goes down to the community level and individual developers and letting them make those decisions, you know, because they can do it a lot faster and sometimes more creatively than we can. So the one thing you also, to build trust with your community, you got to be open and transparent. Now for people, I mean, how important is it for you for things to be open and transparent? I mean, don't you want to know what's going on when you're dealing with someone, when you're contributing your time, even if you're being paid by somebody? Isn't it important that it's open, transparent? Do you agree? Right? We don't want that information to be hidden. So for us, we take that to the, the most possible extreme. So anybody can go in and fix the site, fix our technology, go to our, you know, our, our core technology site, go to Wikitech, and start contributing stuff on multiple levels. And we actually post everything. I mean, you could see our heat maps like for our servers. Everything's public. Our statistics, if you go to stats.wikimedia.org, you can see like everything, like how our traffic's evolving, everything about the breakdown of it. You could even pull our data from the data dumps and, and run your own scripts to figure out you know, whatever information you want to know about us. So here's an article in particular. You could just go in as all you know. Anybody can edit this. And I actually pulled this one out in particular, Campus Party, because you guys need to fix it. <laughs> it needs more citations. It needs to be a little more thorough. So I thought this was a good opportunity. So if anybody is actually online right now, please feel free to edit. And like I said, it's really easy. Anyone can just go in there. Um, you can sign up for a username. It's very quickly. And then you just go to the edit button right there in Wikitext. Go ahead and improve that article. And on the technology side as well. So for example, our iPhone app, we just posted it on GitHub. Um, it's pretty much open. You could just go in there and try to make us more awesome. It's that simple. You know, we will have like code reviewers that kind of look at things, you know, to kind of help you, guide you through the way. But you could even talk to other community members. I mean, it's pretty much an open, free-flowing ecosystem. That's the way we look at these things. And we trust people. We want people to have, we have good faith, and we trust that in good faith, you guys will do the right things. And I think that's part of, part of the issue. I mean, you really got to believe that the people out there are going to do amazing work. And since we really embrace that, that's what makes us successful. So that's pretty much the fundamental line. I mean, we're talking about a completely new world order. It's all about collaboration and self-governance. And like I said, we trust you guys to make those decisions. And so because we do that, because everybody owns this, we spend zero dollars or zero pesos zero yen, however you want to call it. We don't spend any money on advertising, publicity, nothing. You know why? Because if this is your project, these are things that you own, then we don't really have to advertise it to you because you basically tell each other because this is yours, you know? It's that simple. And of course, the cost to use Wikipedia is zero because we want to make this free. It is our mission that we want to improve the world, free knowledge for everybody. So like I said, with this scaled approach, our staff, we have 40 people total. 40 for the number five website in the world. 100,000 hits per second. And when I go back and we talk about some of the other sites that are in the top four, Google, for example, I think they have over 20,000 employees. Even Facebook, I don't know what, the, does anyone know what they're up at right now? 1,300, 1,400? We're at 40. That's it. Even when we got into the top 10, I think we had less than 10 at the time. And the reason this happens is because we have over 100,000 active editors. And active editors, I mean, make at least five edits per month. But there's also millions of people that contribute to it. And when I talk about, you know, the editors, the control that we allow them to have over the project is kind of mind-boggling to some people out there. So, for example, the featured article, people know about the featured article when you go to Wikipedia, it's in every possible language. If you go to the featured article, like in the French language, none of us at the foundation have any idea who selected that. 
We have no, we'd have to email four people. I mean, it's distributed so far down the chain that we've allowed all the people to have the power to make these decisions and we trust them that we don't need to know all these things at a certain point. We trust all everybody that's being involved with the system to make those decisions and that's why they own this. And that's why really it's a pure community site. When people talk about other community sites out there, this is the most extreme and prime example of it that you guys really do own it. Even when we start making decisions, even from the foundation level, we'll post them all over email lists, um, we'll ask for feedback. You can criticize us openly. I mean, it happens to me all the time. You know, cool, you're an idiot, a stupido. And, but as long as there's some constructive criticism behind it, I totally welcome that. And we want to send things back and forth. And I think this is a good model to think about when you guys, even, even if you're not contributor to, to, to Wikipedia, I hope that you will be because this is knowledge project is for you. But even when you guys go out and venture and do your own things, Right, because I'm sure a lot of you will be great entrepreneurs. You'll work at different companies, different organizations, NGOs. I want you to really think about that. What do you want for yourself? I mean, you guys really want to be empowered, right? So the people that you work with, you really also have to embrace, you know, the idea of giving them the power that you want as well. I mean, they're also able to do that as much as you are. So you really have to think about this is a very equal playing field, you know. And so when you guys start up new organizations, new companies, and how you influence them, you're really going to change the dynamic of the way any of these organizations function in the future. So once you start building this up, when we come to a certain point, this is kind of how we call kind of the, the, the feedback cycle, right? So this allows us to continue to grow and grow, and it grows upon itself. So Reach, you know, we try to get in touch with as many communities as possible, go out over the world, whether it's physically and through the internet, to get more people to participate. Then you get more content and then you go get more reach. And this helps really more and more increase our projects. And I think this works on multiple levels. I mean, social gaming is one thing, whether it's like Facebook, all of these things are network effects. I mean, you guys are really aware about this. And us in particular, this is how we look at it, reach, participation, and content. But when you do anything in this field where you're really you know, looking at where communities and users are involved in the development of this, you have to think about it's a feedback loop that builds upon itself. And you want to make sure that you do not inhibit any part of this cycle because this is what makes it successful. Now, in particular for us, like when I want to go back to, I mean, these are things to really think about why this power shift shift has occurred and what has contributed to it. And this is really important because you need all of these things, especially in our case, for it to be successful like it is. It's not like, well, I put a wiki up there and things are going to happen. It doesn't usually, it doesn't work that way. I mean, there are multiple things. And the timing was very right for a project like Wikipedia to be successful. The one thing that you guys are all aware of in technology, if the technology wasn't there, this never would have happened. And when we talk about you know, the infrastructure, it allows for people to share information, obviously, on the internet. It's pretty obvious. Um, creating tools. So this is a big thing for everybody and a lot of companies are focusing on is tool building. You want to give people the ability to create things, to develop things. Before, everything was top down. Companies would just develop things and you would just be passive recipients of this. Now what's happening is we're giving all of you tools. And this is happening on multiple levels with multiple organizations is that we're giving you guys the power to develop these things because you guys are smart. I mean, before institutions were like, well, people are stupid. We, we should decide everything for them. Now they're getting to understand people are smart and they're creative. But we need to give them, give them the ability to do stuff that's really interesting. And then, you know, you have open source, which is really important because it allows multiple people to, to develop on the technology side. When you deal with proprietary technologies, it really limits growth in a lot of ways. So that's very important in terms of how Wikipedia grew and established. And there was a, there was a fundamental shift before we even started that, how, that really helped us with that. And that's, you know, free culture. You know, with Linux, Apache, with sophomore movements where a lot of people were allowed to contribute to things, that really translated into content. So that, along with that, combining with the free knowledge mentality, 
That allowed for a lot of people to contribute for the greater good and allowed Wikipedia to flourish. The final thing that I would not want to overlook, and I think a lot of people, if you're not coming from a legal standpoint, tend to not think about too much, but this is really important with content, is the free licenses. The structure of the license makes it very easy to share stuff. Because if we posted something, let's say like you're a user, Hello? Okay. Technical difficulty. Maybe institutions are trying to shut me down. <laughs> so the one thing that's really important, I think, it's, I think a lot of you understand it, but it, it's still difficult for a lot of people out there that aren't you know, in the technology space, is about the free licenses. And I have a lot of discussions with people about this. But when you post something, like on Wikipedia, or even if you post videos somewhere else, when it's under a free content license, then you can go out there, you could, you could mash it up, you can add things to it, and people can share it and redistribute it. And that is fundamentally important for this to succeed. Because if you can't do that, I mean, if you have to go check on a copyright and then you have to like, get approval from like five lawyers, no one's gonna be able to share anything, people aren't gonna be collabor collaborating, and there's gonna be no growth. So that's really, really important. And so you have to look at all of these things. There's a cultural movement, people are thinking differently, the technology's there, and the licenses support the free movement of that content. And so, what I really wanna stress is that Wikipedia and what we do, and probably anything that you do, is about people. These people, these are the people that are really behind the project. It's not me, it's not the foundation, and a lot of your pictures hopefully will be up there soon. But this is, this is really you guys. You know, and I see it happening in all kinds of areas, like I told you. You know, before you would see, like, you know, a president in a tie and really driving things, but now things are driven this way. You know, so you guys really need to understand and embrace that everything that you do, even the technology space, is about people. Whether they're in Russia, I don't know where she's from, <laughs> I'm assuming not Asia. And it's just a mix of people. And what that happens, I think what's really interesting, because when I show you all the different people that are up there, what I want to go back to is talking about local communities and empowering the people in those communities. So I think one misconception out there is there is one Wikipedia. And when I talked about the 256 languages, some people out there think, well, it's translated from English to Guarani or something like that and they just pull some things out and it's pretty much in the same mindset and it's not. When you register in a different language to edit Wikipedia, you have to deal with that local community and we give them the ownership of that. So this is really, really fascinating. Um, we pulled this data from, from our data logs to see how people were using Wikipedia and I even talked to different people out there because I used to live in Japan and people that were looking at the Japanese content, it's so different from the English content. They actually don't translate all of it. Um, they decide and they pull out what they think is relevant and the structure of the articles is actually quite different. And so even if you look at the usage, this is pretty amazing. When people look up Wikipedia in Japan, 80% is like they're looking up pop culture. You know, they're looking up anime, they're looking up um, stuff that has to do with like, you know, uh, comics and robotics and, and so forth and that's fine. Because the thing is, we don't want to control that. I mean, the communities really need to own that, and I think that's really important. So when people go back, you know, you know they, there's that famous saying, you know, act globally or think, or think global, act local. But a lot of people don't do that. We really do. And I think you guys will be really proud if you look at Spanish. 40% science and technology. <laughs> so that's you guys. You guys are really looking up information, you know, and really science and technology information. So there's a lot more content to be developed there, but you can see just how different these communities are. And we really encourage them to develop differently. So this is what we had before. We had institutions controlling everything. And I think after everything that I've talked through, you know this is no longer the case. And I, and I think it's, it's, it's really funny because even when I came here on the plane 
and I'm sitting next to different people, and it happens to me all the time. Um, they keep talking about, well, you know, is Wikipedia, I mean, it's kind of an interesting thing. I don't really understand it. I mean, you guys have kind of started doing this. We've been doing this for 10 years almost. The 10-year anniversary of Wikipedia will be next January. So we've been around for quite a while and actually have shown that this paradigm is completely different, as along with everybody else developing the space. It's totally different. So when people say, well, you know, it's kind of different, but it may not last, I completely disagree. I think things have fundamentally shifted to the user on multiple levels. And when I say institutions, obviously they'll be around, but the power really is in you guys. I really think it's different now. And this is the start of things. I, I think it's not just a fad. Really, this is the beginning of an entire revolution on very different levels. And I think technology and your mindset has allowed for this to happen. And I encourage you guys to do some amazing things because this is where it is. The community creates what they want and they control what they want. And I think more and more that's gonna happen. And even if you're talking about, like we talked about on the app space, whether it's you know Apple, um, they can't even keep up. I mean, they've opened up the platform. People will jailbreak you know, the iPhone or the iPad and you'll see really cool, crazy apps come out like in a week, right? I mean, it's not even ones that they can quickly you know, get up you know, their, their bandwidth in time to sanction them. That's how fast things are moving. So when people say, well, you know, things will still kind of go back and institutions will control these things, I don't think so. I really think you guys have a lot of power to do whatever you want at this point. And the important thing is with the technology and the way it is, it doesn't matter where you are anymore. You can succeed anywhere. You can contribute to Wikipedia, you can create your own project. Hey, they have a, the, your famous uh, Mexican astronaut in there, that's why I wanted to put that in there too. But to show you, it doesn't really matter anymore. I, I want to see not only people from here contributing to Wikipedia and the projects, because this is, this is your time, this is your project, but I think in the next 10 years or even less, there will be some amazing organizations, companies coming out of Mexico. You know, you guys have the ability to do anything on par with what's happening in the United States or Europe or Japan. You, I mean, you guys really have to understand that and believe it. You guys have that power, really. Before, for example, let's say you wanted to start a company, you'd have to probably go to the United States because you didn't have access to capital, right? And trying to get to those markets, how do you distribute to that? Well, you probably have to meet with somebody in like London and then they have to work with their distribution chain. Well, that's not necessary anymore. You get online, I mean, you know, if you want to buy a few servers, I mean, you could do this all very cheaply and it's all intellectually driven. You can distribute if especially if it's something that has to do with technology and on the internet, it's instantaneously. People don't care where you're from. So you guys really have to understand that you guys can do as much or more than anybody anywhere else in the world. So you're celebrating your 200 uh, years of liberty. Well, I want you guys to embrace that. I mean, it kind of coincides with our revolution as well but it's a revolution on multiple levels. And like I said, I mean, this is your time, you know, Camposetos, you guys gotta do this. This is all about you. So I wanna end with this thought right here. And this is really to encourage you guys to be bold. Be as bold as you possibly can. Because when people talk about what's possible, you know, some of these things don't really work out. So in theory, if you thought about the idea of Wikipedia, well, let's let everybody contribute to this thing. It's an open wiki. You're gonna have great content out of that. People just thought that's just ridiculous. That is probably the stupidest idea I've ever heard of. And in theory, it does not work. But in practice, it does. So what that should tell you about yourself is that you probably shouldn't listen to a lot of people out there. You should probably just go and do it. If you have a good idea, you have the ability and the tools to do that. You guys should just do it. Don't let people tell you what's not possible out there because we've shown from the Wikipedia and the other projects out there, the sky's the limit. And like I said, whether you're Mexican, you're Japanese, American, does not matter anymore. You guys have the power to control your communities, influence them, and do anything you want on your own. Muchas gracias.
Sí, sí. Okay. Bueno, Cool está dispuesto a contestar preguntas de la audiencia, entonces si alguien tiene pregunta, por favor, levante la mano. Hello, good afternoon. Hi, cool. How are you? I'm here. <laughs> well, okay, my name is Jorge, and I have a question for you. Uh, well, uh, I've seen your message, and I think it's wonderful. Uh, we have a tool of knowledge for everybody for free. But on the other hand, we have the risk that there are mm, a lot of people that could create and write an article that could be wrong or devised, uh, I don't know. Uh, what kind of filters uh, Wikipedia have to, to check these uh, kind of articles? Because a um, uh, time ago I heard that uh, the girlfriend of a uh, uh, superstar, I, I don't know, uh, uh, fight with him and she altered uh, his Wikipedia article what kind of filters or locks we have to avoid that kind of things? <laughs> I mean, to be successful the way we are, quality is very important, obviously. You don't want people to go in and vandalize certain things, but it's also a difficult balance. Um, the first thing I want to say is we don't have all the answers, and for us it's always trial and error. So the one thing I also wanted people to know is like, you need to make mistakes and you need to try things. Like we're trying things all the time. We walk in the office the next day, we're like, oh crap, we totally messed this up. We need to change this. And that's, that's the reality, but I think you need to embrace that. So in terms of like, you know, validating or filtering content or so forth, we, we don't really want to do that. We want to be as democratic, as open as possible. That being said, I would say the majority of it is really driven by community. You know, we have community, they have like, you know, um, there, there's watch you know, lists that they try to figure out you know, which articles could possibly be vandalized, but we're trying different things. Um, you know, we have a software program we rolled out. We have this algorithm in, called Pending Changes. So it, what it does is it kind of tries to figure out if it's a user that really doesn't have a lot of edi editing experience and it's maybe a controversial article, the article gets flagged for review. Um, we're trying to balance those things out because obviously we want things to be democratic and in real time, but we also don't want people to vandalize things excessively. So we're trying that out and that will tag certain articles and then they have to be reviewed before they're posted up. But if, let's say you're a long time editor, it's more likely that your, your edit will just go through immediately and then it'll be checked later because we try to assume good faith. So it's not a perfect system. So we're trying different things. So I'd say half of it, or I would say much more than half of it, is really driven by community. They kind of look at things, you know, when people start building their credibility within the community, they get more access to different things. They become an administrator, bureaucrat, and steward, and there's more things that they can actually change that other people have edited. But also with pending changes, you know, rolling out that script, it allows us to kind of look at different articles and then flag it for community members you know, to see that and prevent it from going up if we think it's going to be really problematic. And like I said, it's still an experimental stage. So check back with me in a few months and I can tell you if it's working or not. Here. Uh, okay, hi, my name is Fernando. Uh, I'm totally agree with what you have to say just now. Um, Wait, you, don't, you don't want to join an institution and no. control everything? <laughs> no, 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 please don't. Uh, maybe my question is just a silly question, but I have this um, idea. But uh, where does the Wikipedia name comes from? And I okay. guess you are the one that can finally answer that for me okay. <laughs> and maybe for the so, others. Uh, so the name uh, Pedia, you know, from Encyclopedia, yeah. Yeah, sure. right? So when I said Jimmy first tried to, when he, the founder of Wikipedia, when he first tried to do this, he started Newpedia which new came from like GNU free documentation licenses. And that was more of a top down system that didn't work. Mm -hmm. So um, I think somebody that worked with it, I don't know all the facts of this story. There are different, <laughs> different um, takes of the story. 
but somebody introduced wikis from Ward Cunningham, you know, who developed wikis, and said, well, let's create a side project where people can kind of sandbox, experiment. And they just took the last part, because you had new Pedia from Encyclopedia, they just took Pedia and added wiki in front of it. Because wikis were there, and that was the technology that they used. Right. So Wikipedia is just wiki plus the end part of Pedia. Right. Thanks. Hi. So you said uh, there are 40 people on your staff. Right. And since uh, the user is the one who writes the articles, uh, what does the institution do? So, I mean, like I said, I mean, a lot of it is, you know, providing infrastructure. I mean, if you think about it, I mean, even like our 40 people don't just do infrastructure. But if you're talking about the number five website in the world, um, something comparable, you would need hundreds of people just to run infrastructure, right? But I mean, even this, we probably only have like three people committed to that right now. I mean, we also have to figure out how do we create different platforms to, you know, to get onto like mobile, different spaces. We strategically need to also figure out allocation of resources. We also manage the brand. Um, there, are, there are multiple things we do also with partnerships because from an institutional level, we need to also connect with different organizations and help our local communities and do that. And what I talk about, um, kind of the foundation's role in a lot of ways. We try to empower the local communities here. So I actually have a couple um, local Wikipedians, like, uh, you know, Yvonne and Miguel, and they're starting a local chapter here. You know, but they need support from the, from the institution, like how do you set things up? We provide grant support. We even provide scholarships to people to come to our annual conference so people can meet face to face. Because sometimes, just like Campus Party, I mean, you can't just do everything online. It's like great for everybody to meet each other. And so we try to facilitate those things as well. So there's multiple things we do. And like I said, on a higher strategic level, we try to help you know, manage those discussions, the list, you know, everything that kind of in, in, is involved in kind of developing the projects. Hi, good afternoon. Uh, I was wondering if you could tell me about uh, what kind of projects do you have in, in Wikipedia? I mean, I don't know, in a, in a short time or long time, medium time. Well, Wikipedia, the way, the way we look at it, it's just a project, right? So Wikimedia has multiple projects. We have Wikimedia Commons, which is a repository for rich media, like pictures and video. Um, there's Wikiquote, Wiki Wikispecies, Wikibooks, they're all collaborative projects for knowledge. We really focus on knowledge creation so and for usage of people. So those projects are still in development. Um, people contribute to them. There's also Wiki News. There's a whole bunch of them. Some of them are, depending on even what language, like Wiktionary is much more developed in Spanish than it is in some other languages because we allow the communities to take ownership. But we allow the community, actually, if they come up with new ideas, um, to kind of work with each other and they can start another collaborative project within the Wikimedia umbrella. I think the one thing to think about is when I do talk about institutions, that's really important, is my, my first slide really talked about Wikipedia movement. Well, there's really even a Wikimedia movement about free knowledge. So we encourage all those things to happen and they don't even have to happen under our umbrella because we can't do everything. Like if somebody else is doing some other amazing free knowledge project, you know, we don't have a lot of staff to support it, but our community might support it. I mean, it's really a movement, like I said. We really feel like there's a whole bunch of things in part of this ecosystem that will evolve. So like we have some things that are within the Wikimedia umbrella, but there can be a lot of other things out there. And we could probably even collaborate with a separate project that evolves from somebody else that's totally different from ours. But if it's about free knowledge and empowering people, you know, I think there's ways that we could possibly work with that. So like I said, think about us as a movement. And you guys are part of that movement. I'm just facilitating it, helping facilitate it, really. Uh, hello, my name is Octavio. Um, well, uh, in order to run um, uh, an enterprise like uh, Wikimedia, you need servers and all this. Yeah. And all this uh, costs money. Right. So where do you get the money from? Well, the majority of our money actually is from community donations. So we run as a charity, and we did an online fundraiser last year. We were trying to raise seven, six million dollars. We raised, I think, more than that, about seven in two months when we were looking at three months. So a lot of it 
is really from people that use Wikipedia and community members as well. And the average donation, I might be getting this wrong, but I'm in the ballpark, it was about $30 from about 200,000 people. So that's where we got most of our money because we run as a charity, but we also have different foundations supporting us, like especially on projects like the Ford Foundation, uh, Omid Yar, um, the Sloan Foundation, Stanton, and they help us on you know different initiatives that we're doing. We've also done some select business deals. We could do stuff with like brand licensings, but we're very careful about those things because we want the community to be, to be involved with that. But uh, that being said, a lot of people do donate stuff to help us out, even like different companies, and we don't use, we don't, our, our costs aren't very high. I mean, our whole budget for last year was only $10 million. You know, I mean, I think that's probably what Facebook or Google spends like in two hours. So <laughs> we're pretty efficient. We don't need a lot of money to do what we do. Um, yeah, I'm Saulo Russo, and I'm amazed that you can ruin one of the top five websites with just 40 people. And well, let me clarify. It's really everybody that runs the website. Oh, well. You know, but I, I like to really emphasize that because, you know, when you think about it, it's kind of that notion of we're running things and we're not. We're part of the ecosystem. That's that's the way you should think about it. Yeah. Well, I'm thinking that what you brought is the idea. Yeah. And I mean, most of us we manage hardware. We we need servers or something sure. to run a website. But basically, that's not the idea. So um, my question is, can you tell us about? I don't know, some obstacles we might have when having an idea, but uh -huh. I don't, I'm thinking, I have a great idea, but I need servers, I need people who contribute. What kind of obstacles do you have okay. when running well, this Wikipedia? Well, I think a better example is, before I even did this, even a long time ago, I used to build startup companies, right? So the best way to do that, I mean, before, even like in the mid 90s, you would need like millions of dollars to buy servers, and I mean, now you could run lots of stuff off the cloud. So you, you try to bootstrap as possible. And the thing is, you may not need as much money as you think. I mean, you're in a very different time period nowadays. Like, thinking like 30 years ago, it would be impossible to start up like a Twitter or anything, impossible. Even 10 years ago, it would have been extremely difficult and costly. I mean, now you could basically, you know, maybe negotiate some free service off the cloud with somebody. You know, do some like, I mean, you gotta just be creative, but you don't need a lot. You know, once you start building up like, you know, scale, then you start thinking about, you know, the next things. But the way to kind of think about it is more from a startup entrepreneurial sense. And it really depends on your idea and what you're trying to do, but you could do a lot with very little. But I just say be creative. I mean, you know, you could even like, you know, even for us, you know, even in the beginning stages, we would like call up like, you know, from our tech staff, they would call up bandwidth service providers and say, look, you're not using your bandwidth at night. Can we like use some of that? And they would, they would be okay with it. You'd be surprised. I mean, there's a lot of people that want to be helpful. So I would say try everything you can. Be creative. Don't think about the rules. Just do it. But going back to what I said, you don't need a lot now to do something pretty amazing. You can start off with very little. So it should not be a barrier to you now. Hi, uh, my name is Rodrigo, over here. <laughs> Hi, here. Uh, did, <laughs> I was distorted by the lights over there. And the, right. and the Google Globe was just playing with my mind. <laughs> this may sound a little uncomfortable, but I'm 100% with Wikipedia. Uh -huh. But I have heard rumors that the FBI is trying to sue Wikipedia about the logo, right. I'm, I think that's totally lame <laughs> from the US, I don't disagree with you. USA <laughs> government yeah. because I don't see anything similar from the FBI logo. So yeah. what, what, what's the next step? Uh, maybe you can do an initiative from all the people around the world against that shoe because they're trying to get more money right. from something that is from all the world. I don't, I don't know. I mean, I, I agree with you. It doesn't make any sense what they're doing. Um, I sit right next to our general counsel, Mike Godwin. I, he's been in the newspaper about this recently. Uh, most, I think the last one was in the New York Times. And I mean, he's fighting it. I, he's, a, he's a fabulous lawyer. It's totally in his hands. And you know, we get, we get sued all the time. Um, a lot of them get dropped, lo lawsuits get dropped. Some of them get taken. I mean, we, I could do a 10 hour lecture about all the different things people try to sue us for, all the issues that come up. 
Um, this is like one of them. We just selectively look at them and if we have to fight them, we fight them and you know, we fight the good fight and we really disagree with the FBI in this case. And I'm not an expert in law that goes to like Mike Godwin, but you know, these things happen all the time. And I think going back to your question from the institutional level, we have to do this. We can't allow communities to deal with, you know, any kind of legal issues and there are a lot of them. So that's another role that we play. But we deal with them when they come up. And a lot of interesting stuff comes up. And if you guys are ever in San Francisco, just come by our office. You know, we'll show you some of the crazy stuff that happens. It's pretty fun, you know. It'd be interesting conversation. Uh, un unfortunately, uh, we've hit our time limit. So that concludes the session, the keynote for now. Uh, desgraciadamente ya hemos llegado a las dos y tenemos que cerrar la sesión. Los que están con la prensa van a estar, eh, va a haber una rueda de prensa en el salón, el lounge Movistar, empezando en algunos minutos. Entonces, los de prensa pueden ir ahí para seguir con preguntas exclusivamente de prensa. Muchas gracias. Todo Muchas gracias. Viva México. And I'll be around, so if you guys even want to just come up to me, ask me questions, totally like available. And I haven't been sleeping much like you guys, so if I'm passed out somewhere, please wake me up. Appreciate it. <laughs>